All right. Next, I'm going to call Inri Christopher Kodiak and Rebecca Knowles. This is 23-300-33508. Um, and I see you there, sir. And what I don't see, you can go ahead and unmute. What I don't see um, is any proof of service in this matter. Has this matter been served? Oh, you'll have to unmute. So if you tap your screen, um, you should have a little uh, old fashioned microphone come up. Usually it's in the left hand corner. And same for you, ma'am. There you go. Uh, I see you, ma'am. Ma'am, can you tell me your name? Rebecca Knowles. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right. okay. And I see you've gotten, you're unmuted. Thank you. And I see you're unmuted as well, sir. Thank you. Um, ma'am, I'm going to start with him first, um, and then I'll ask you a couple questions. Um, so, sir, I see that you have filed um, documents, but what I don't see in my um, in my file is what's called a proof of service. And that's just a document that lets me know that everything that you filed in this case has been mm -hmm. served on Mrs. Knowles. Has that happened? Um, yes, it says it says it says it's filed in I got a phone call and, um I went down there for canceled stuff like that on Monday and they said and they just printed they, they printed this out basically is what it was. I don't know if she'd been served or anything like that. So you got paid the yeah, paid the fee and everything else. So I'm not really sure. Okay. So you paid the hold, hold on. I'll I'll get to you, Miss Knowles, I promise. So I sir Oh, you, I know, I can't hear him very well either. Um, so, um, oh. sir, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to actually have you turn your video off. Um, our video takes up a lot of the bandwidth. Perfect. And so I'll probably be able to hear you better now. So I know that you have filed your case. Have you given okay. it to the sheriff or a process yes. server? Okay. So you gave it to the sheriff to have her served. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Have you received a document back from the sheriff's office that lets you know that that actually happened? Um, no, we just have the receipt. No, I just have the receipt. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, thank you for that information. I'm going to ask Ms. Knowles a couple questions. So Ms. Knowles, um, thank you for being here today. Have you received a copy of all the documents? I have received a copy of one document. Okay. What was the document you received? It was saying that I have court today. Okay. Because he filed for a, uh, a immediate restraining order ex parte when I tried to file one. Okay. Okay. So I, uh, when I got here this morning, I got this. I paid to get this. Okay. Just one moment. So here's the way this process works so that you both understand. Um, what I have, um, well, number one, um, the way the process works is um, this isn't a time where people testify and swear in. Everything that I have to consider has to be in written documents that are filed with the court. Those have to be filed usually about a week in advance for them to make it into the computer system. So I don't usually look at actually paper um, files. I look at electronic files and there's a little bit of a time lag from the time you drop it off to the time it gets scanned in and makes it into my system. Um, if I was to make decisions today, um, obviously I don't have any information provided by you, Ms. Knowles. And then it would be, I don't hold on, I'll explain and then I'll give you another chance to talk then it would just be a one-sided case, right? Because then I'm basing everything that I'm deciding only on what has been filed. And so far, what's been filed is only by one party. And that certainly wouldn't be fair to only consider one side of the story. The court really wants to listen and understand both sides of the story before I make any orders for children. So what I have is um, the initial documents that have been filed, but I don't have anything from the other side, which is what I need to make a decision. Um, so, okay, Ms. Knowles, go ahead. What do you need to ask? Um, I, I would like to know when my daughter's returned because I have a court order from 2014 from Oregon because Chris had stipulations for him to be in his daughter's life, did not do them, and he hasn't been present for since 2014. Okay. So... This is where I said that this isn't a time where we testify. So you're telling me really potentially critical information, but it has to be written and it has to be filed. 
for me to be able to consider it. So you're sort of saying, well, I want to tell you um, information um, and ask the court to make a decision based on that. Hold on. When I'm talking, then you wait and I promise I'll give you another opportunity to talk. So we have to base it on, I have to base my decisions on what's in the court file. Um, and I can only see the things that have already been filed. So you may have important information. I don't know. I just can't see it right now. Um, all right. So um, with that, um, does that make sense? Do you understand, ma'am? Yeah, I understand. But how is it that I have to pay to get my own court paperwork and completely miss court? This is the second court date. I haven't received nothing. Besides I trying to uh, find my missing daughter, get her the help that she needs because she has court orders, things that she's supposed to be doing and they're withholding her. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Um, sounds like um, the sheriff's office has a full set of the paperwork. Um, so you should be, if you're in the courthouse, you should be able to go downstairs and ask them about it. And they should have a full set to be able to provide to you at no cost to you. So why is it, does I still have to be away longer from my daughter because nobody did their job and I'm not getting served no papers. I had to buy papers when I came in this morning. I understand. I have to base my decision on what's in the court file. I cannot base my decision on things I have not seen or things that you're telling me today. So here's what I'm going to do. In this matter, I'm going to set the matter over one week. School next week. I understand. I cannot base my decision on things that are not filed and things that I cannot see. So I'm going to set the matter over one week. That gives um, Mr. an opportunity to file proof of service. And that allows you an opportunity to file a response, which is what you need to do so that the court can understand your position and what's happening. She All right. Out. I understand. Um, so, sir, you understand that you need to file your proof of service. Um, Ma'am, you'll need to file your materials. Um, and then the court will consider it. It's the same day. It's the same um, day and time as I'm having a hearing today. So it'll be nine o'clock next week at the same place um, and then we'll have a hearing. I encourage everyone to file anything that they're gonna file right away so that it's in the court file to be considered. Okay, so yeah. that's my ruling for today. Um, I see you raising your hand, ma'am. If you can speak calmly, I'm willing to listen to you. So you'll need to unmute and then you can speak. How is it that my daughter has court ordered things she's supposed to be doing and they're withholding her? How because right now there is a Washington order that dictates where she's going to reside. And I don't have any information that would allow me to make a different order at this time. So that's why. So I have to base the information on what's in the court file right now. So you'll both need to file anything you need well, over one week. My daughter, because nobody did their job. And I Ma'am, you're done. I've made my decision. The current orders will stay. We're setting the matter over one week. I'll see you, everyone back here in one week. Thank you. All right. And I'll sign the orders that you provided, but it's just going to reference that the next hearing is one week. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. That takes us to Kudlak and Knowles. All right, and I've got you there, sir. Um, I see you there, ma'am. Thank you for being present. Let me give me just one moment to get that file up. All right. Um, I did have an opportunity to read the things um, that both of you submitted. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that um, both of you submitted paperwork for the court to review today. That's appreciated along with some of the sort of historical documents um, associated with this child. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, before we get um, too far um, in depth, um, is it Kudlak? How do you say your name, sir? Kudlachek. Kudlachek. Okay. Um, so where do you reside? Uh, Kelso, Washington, out in Lexington. Okay. And then I have you, Ms. Knowles. Where do you reside? Longview, Washington. Okay. Um, very good. 
So uh, the way this works is initially, um, Mr. was the one that um, filed. Um, and so I'm gonna give him an opportunity. I have to choose somebody to go first. That's how I do it. Um, so sir, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to explain what you want and why um, I do, and based on the materials that you filed. Um, and then ma'am, I'll turn the time to you um, to have the same opportunity. Um, so um, go ahead, sir. Um, I'm just trying to make it to where I'm trying to put her in school and I'm trying to do stuff with her and I don't want her mom to just come up and try to take her. Um, so. And because she's, you know, she's worried about that. So, and she's really stressed out about it. And so I'm just trying to keep her safe and trying to keep her to where she can, you know, know that she's safe and where she's staying. Okay. Anything else? Um, no, ma'am. All right. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Well, first of all, eight years ago, uh, like the paper that I did in the response is it was granted to me because Chris was MIA. There were stipulations that he was supposed to do and never did them ended up leaving from a visit. It's been eight years since he's even tried to do anything. He says something about uh, her, him being there in 2018. I mean, Aza might've went a weekend or that's about it. Uh, Aza assaulted me. She got in trouble. She got a judge's order. She went to juvie. She got an assault floor. They put it in a deferred disposition. She got court order to do counseling. She got court order to do multiple things that her and I've been doing. She got mad and ran away. She went to... <coughs> Christopher cut the checks and yeah I don't let her have social media because she snuck out she posts half naked pictures of her she's 12 years old and him saying that he wants to keep her safe where has he been for eight years I mean as you can see there's numerous stipulations from a judge that numerous we saw that he has not done at all I mean in eight years that's a long time I'm pretty sure you could get that stuff done when you care for your daughter I mean there's just like I I put into the order, they're giving Aza drugs. There's black and white, her saying she's getting it from her cousin. Don't sit there and roll your eyes. That's not appropriate. Uh, I mean, I feel that Aza's not safe where she's at. I mean, it's been eight years. I called, uh, yeah, I called the sheriff. It's not stalking. I'm looking for my missing child. She's still reported missing. <coughs> yeah, I called a uh, crisis response and had them go out there because just like I put in the response, she's suicidal. She got mad from the judge because she assaulted me and there's actions to her consequences. And she ran away. After she ran away, I found all this stuff saying she's gonna kill herself. She's taking pills to do this. That's why I called crisis response with her counselor, set that up and her probation officer and CPS set that up. But it was refused <coughs> from uh, Mr. Kudlicek and Connie at 250. What, what was refused? Um, Aza, she was, crisis response was there to transport her for an intake. Okay. For the suicidal, all the suicidal notes and stuff that I put in. Uh, he doesn't even know her birthday. If you look at the paper, the order, he put her birthday in wrong. Her birthday's not January 20th. And this is, I mean, eight years ago. Uh, he didn't even put his birthday right on the birth certificate. His own. So uh, that's null and void because when you search it up, it's not his. And if he wants to talk about that, I mean, maybe we should do a DNA test, but I feel under the stipulations, Aza needs to come back. She hasn't been around him. They haven't done anything in eight years. And it's more him, like with this paper, it's not just his phone number. I mean, he has his mom's email. Why isn't it just between him and I? Aza is supposed to start school on Tuesday. She has an intake. She hasn't done any of her counseling for her deferred disposition. She has less than 20 days to do what she needs to do, or she will be charged with that assault. And I don't feel it's right for her to run away <coughs> and not have to do what the judge ordered when she assaulted somebody. I mean, she starts supposed to be starting school on Wednesday, Tuesday. I mean, it's been almost two months and she's still, I mean, she's still reported missing. I haven't had contact. He wants to put in a restraining order. I mean, if you also read the paperwork from the Oregon judge because he didn't do what he was supposed to do, he's not supposed to be around her. I just feel like, you know, uh, Aza needs to come back home because, I mean, I've been her only provider in, in over eight years. No outreach. They haven't been to one school thing. They haven't anything. And them saying that I'm ta I've took Aza out of state before. Yes, I have because I got her custody. I got custody of her back in Oregon and there was an interstate state compact for me to bring her in Washington. I'm sorry, but there's, oh, there's, stipulations he was ordered from a judge to do he decided that is wasn't enough for his time for him to take time out of what he was doing 
the six months that it took me to get our daughter back, he did nothing. He went missing, doing drugs, doing whatever. Still to this day, court, I mean, even when I went to go get this order printed out, Oregon still doesn't know where he is. So, and yeah, Aza did, I never put a cigarette out on her face. When she assaulted me, I had a cigarette in her hand and it got her on the face. And that's what the CPS report says. And also the police report because they were called in. And uh, I mean, that's it. Um, sir, I'll give you an additional opportunity um, to respond since um, she got to listen to sort of what uh, you said and then make her response. I'll give you an opportunity um, to respond as well. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, she's not getting any drugs from me or my, my, her cousin anywhere around my house. She cannot. Um, I've talked to her CPS worker that's been out to my house. I've talked to her FFT lady that's been out to my house. So she, I talked to her probation officer. They all say she's happy and she's safe where she is. Um, I don't know what else, what else does, you know, so she's doing what she's supposed to be doing. Um, I was going to put her in school, but I was waiting for what happened today to find out. So, cause she's worried about if I put her in school that her mom's going to come take her out of school. And so she's, that's what she's worried about. So, so I was waiting for her today before I put her in a school. Okay. So. so it sounds like you've been in contact with her probation officers. Have you been in contact with her, uh, I've her family therapist out there, out here at my house. I've, I've talked to her, I've talked to her probation officer, I've talked to CPS workers out here. Um, I've had sheriffs at my house. I've talked to them. Um, the crisis intervention team, I've talked to them. Um, hey, you guys help for Aza? Hold on. One at a time. Go ahead. And, and so, yes, I've been, Aza's been doing everything she's supposed to be doing. And so, yeah, that's all. all. Right. Very good. All right, thank you. Um, I appreciate both of you. Um, I appreciate um, you both being here. Um, and again, um, the fact that you're both here uh, is a clear indication um, that you both care very much um, about your child, which I appreciate. Um, in this case, um, first thing we need to do is we need to appoint what's called a guardian ad litem. Um, guardian ad litem is um, essentially fancy Latin um, for court's investigator. Um, people come to court um, similarly to the two of you um, where um, I don't know either of you personally, which is a good thing in the sense that I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a neutral decision maker for you both. Um, one side says, you know, you know, the father's terrible. The other side says mother's terrible. And, and I'm kind of like, well, you were both saying, you know, each other is not a good place for the child. Uh, guardian item's job is to come um, and uh, meet with all the parties, meet with the child, talk to all the providers. And it sounds like there's quite a few in this case. Um, to give the court sort of a, a neutral person that is sort of boots on the ground is what I say, um, and to get um, that information. So I am going to do that first and foremost. The clerk's going to give me the next three names um, on the court um, guarded ad litem list. That's Twyla Corey, Keith Lawrence, and Heather Kale. Um, uh, sir, do you have any preference as to the guardian ad litem? No, ma'am. Ma'am, um, do you have any preferences to the guardian ad litem? Oh, you'll need to unmute. No, I don't, but like I said, a DNA test needs done. So no, ma'am, that's not appropriate. Um, if he is on the child's birth certificate and the child is 12, that ship has sailed. Um, and the idea, and I'd have serious concerns to the parent who would try to disestablish a parent at age 12. Um, so but, well, but his birth date wrong. Everything's been wrong. This is stuff that he was even ordered by a judge to fix was never fixed. It, it's clear that he's, he is the legal birth father, um, according to the state of Washington. Um, so we're not doing that. Um, if you want to raise, uh, anyone's free to raise that, but you haven't done that in a motion today. Um, and the court's declining any oral motion to do that. Um, so, um, that takes us. So, uh, first name on the list is Ms. Twyla Corey. Give me just a moment. Mm -hmm. 
One moment. And what I'm doing is I'm just filling out the guardian ad litem order just so you both know. Okay. Um, sir, are you currently employed? No, I have a job waiting for me after all this court stuff is over. I didn't want to lose it while we were doing all this, uh, missing days of work and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm going to be starting. How much, how much are you going to earn per hour? Uh, 1975. Okay. Um, Ma'am, are you currently employed? No. Okay. I have a question. Yeah, just one moment. So uh, what I have done is I filled out what's called an order appointing the guardian ad litem. I'm appointing Twyla Corey. She's gonna investigate um, all issues regarding establishing a parenting plan for this child. I'm also asking her to look at domestic violence issues, mental health issues, and substance issues um, as to all the parties, uh, including the child. Um, I'm gonna make her report due in early January with a review of her report um, January 25th of 2024. Um, so I know that sounds like it's a long way away, um, but we give our guardian lives at least 120 days um, and then usually plus a, a little bit more time to be able to talk to all the parties. She'll have to get releases signed. Um, please be um, quick on signing any releases. Um, I'll get to you, ma'am, I promise. Um, uh, as you go along um, to make sure that you're not delaying the report. Um, I'm sure you both would like to have the report issued in a timely manner. Um, obviously she can do it sooner, um, but that um, is the sort of the, the deadline um, that the court establishes um, to get a report. Um, I've put both of your phone numbers um, as I have them in the court file um, in for you to be able, for the grant alignment to contact you. Um, but I encourage you both to contact the clerk's office once this hearing is done to obtain um, Ms. Corey's number and reach out to her directly. Let her know that um, an order has been entered and give her your information. Um, that will certainly speed the process along um, and ensure you receive um, all the documents and materials um, from her as well. Um, Ma'am, you had a question. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'm concerned about what's her being placed there. Like what I submitted, she openly admits that she's getting drugs there at 12 years old. So, I mean, that that kind of needs to be uh, taken care of or addressed because oh, yeah. it's, it's self messaging people saying she's getting drugs where she's at right now. She needs to be home. All right. So uh, I haven't gotten to where the child's going to be placed yet. So I am going to do that next. Um, so at this time, um, what are you going to do? Obviously, there are concerns. Um, there are concerns um, both ways. Um, both parties um, raised some pretty significant concerns for the child. Um, there's some historic concerns, although I do recognize that those concerns are seven to eight years um, in the past, which is quite a bit of time um, in the concept of a child's life. You both raise current concerns as well. Um, so obviously, there's a long history um, of concern. Um, at this point, I have child assaulting mom. Um, that's not a good sign. Um, it sounds like child has some uh, mental health struggles. Um, again, I want to make sure that that gets addressed. Um, she does. Um, sounds like both parents are aware of uh, probation and the diversion program, um, which I appreciate. Um, seems like both parents have been pretty um, cognizant of that and working through that process. So that's good um, that you're both um, up to date on that. Um, at this point, though, um, considering um, the child's assaultive nature um, on, um, on mom um, and considering sort of the needs of the child, again, this is a temporary order. It is not a final order. I am going to place child with father at this point. Um, father is going to be Oregon, obligated. Oregon. Your Oregon order dismisses that case, meaning it because does not exist. No, when I am talking, you are not talking. I reviewed that file. Your Oregon order dismisses that case. It does not establish a parenting plan. I appreciate that you completed the things that the court obligated you to do seven years ago or whenever that case started, which would have been further back. Um, 
But at this point, we're dealing with essentially a tween. And before you were dealing with a young grade school child, um, yeah, a lot has happened between then and now. So my order is a temporary one. It is not a final one. This is what we're going to do as a Band-Aid until we get to the next step and have a complete guardian ad litem investigation, which is what, what, I, what I am ordering. You both will have the opportunity to talk to the guardian ad litem and you'll both have the opportunity to present your case at trial. So father's gonna be primary. Father is going to establish the child in school um, in Kelso. Um, so child will need to attend Kelso schools. Father's going to need to work with probation and the diversion program um, yeah, on whatever she needs to do um, to be able to complete the diversion program and, um, and work through that process. Um, you need to be good about allowing um, and informing mother um, of that process as well. Um, so that means that you can't just cut mother out and act like she doesn't exist. Um, you're going to have to provide um, her information on um, that you're essentially complying with diversion. Um, similarly, you're going to need to establish the child, if she's not already, um, uh, with a mental health provider or to continue her mental health um, services. So you'll it's need to do that there. as well. Um, with the mental health services, um, again, you need to provide mother with notification of, of appointments and those types of things um, so that mother knows and is aware that that process is continuing along and that you're compliant. Does that make sense, sir? He wasn't compliant. Uh, yeah. Judge? No. And we're going to find that out, aren't we? Um, so uh, everybody is definitely under the microscope at this point, meaning that um, guardian ad litem is going to be checking up on you. The court has a review date. If people aren't compliant um, when we come back on review, it doesn't mean that custody is going to stay how it is right now. The court can 100% change custody. And if you're not compliant, the court will. Um, I need parents who can be on target for their kids and put their kids first. And that means getting them in school, making sure they're there every day, all day, um, making sure that they're compliant with mental health. Ma'am, I've given you an opportunity to speak. If you keep interrupting, I'm going to have to remove you and I don't want to do that. Um, so um, so you're going to have to make sure that um, she's uh, child's compliant with probation and the diversion program um, and provide proof of that compliance. Do you understand, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm also going to order that both of you um, obtain a program called My or Our Family Wizard. Um, if you Google it, Our Family Wizard, you'll be able to find it online. Um, it's an app that you can enroll in um, or download to your phone. Um, it's a de minimis cost to you both, um, but it allows you to communicate um, with each other through essentially a portal. Well, that'll be your choice now. Um, sir, it, whether or not she complies, I expect you to comply. Um, so you'll need to download Our Family Wizard. You're each going to pay your own fee for that service. Um, and then... Um, provide your own fee for that service. Um, and then that's how you'll provide um, mother with information. So um, you can use that to download documents and send those to her appointment notifications and those types of things. Um, I do, I do want to set up visitation um, for mother. I am concerned about what that's going to look like. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to set um, I'm going to set visits um, with the child um, and mother, and those are going to be every um, first and third weekend from Friday at five to Sunday at five. Weekends are determined by Fridays. Um, I'm going to have um, the exchanges be at the um, Kelso Safeway parking lot. Neither parent is to exit their vehicle. Um, this is a 12 year old. She can transport herself between the cars. So parents don't talk at exchanges. You don't get out of your cars. You don't make it a whole drama. Child exchanges herself. Um, so she goes from your car to, um, to Mrs. And then she, on Sunday, she'll come back in the same fashion. Um, do you understand, uh, sir? Yes, ma'am. Um, I had a question. I had a parenting plan served and it's on the 7th of September. What are we doing about that? Is that not? Um, Is it a proposed you? parenting plan? Yes. yes. Okay. 7th of September of what, what was filed? Um, I filed a, like a parenting plan um, and oh. evidence and stuff like that. So. 
Okay, you filed your proposed parenting plan. Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, I see that. Um, the um, thank you. I'm not making any findings as to either parent today. Um, so you're yes. asking for a bunch of findings. Those come usually with the final order. So again, either trial um, agreement or default. Um, so I'm not making any of those decisions today. Um, I am going to leave decision making. Um, I'm going to put decision making with father at the moment because I don't believe the two of you can jointly decide anything. Um, uh, I, that's unfortunate, but based on the presentation today, I don't believe um, anyone can decide that. Um, yes, ma'am. The reason why DNA hasn't been brought up because he hasn't been in her life for the past eight years. It was brought up in Oregon. He never came back and he left. That's why it has not been taken care of. Okay. Um, in the birth, it's, it was brought up when she was four years old. Okay, I appreciate that. Okay, um, the at this point, I do have the sealed document listing him as the parent. Um, even if there's some um, Scrivener's error as to the birth date, that does not invalidate him as a parent. Um, so um, going back to the parenting plan, um, so I'm going to have father make decisions, not making any findings um, to either parent at this time. Custodian is father. Um, talked about visits already. Um, mother is to have, um, a, I'm going to, we'll be at Christmas before you're back to review. So I want to show you her. Until her birthday. I can't see my daughter. So, uh, I've never had a child complain about having, uh, two birthday parties. Um, and so, um, you'll each celebrate child's birthday on her time. Um, the, let's see, um, it's on Christmas. Ma'am, if you cannot manage yourself, you'll be excused oh, from the hearing. Uh, I'm going to order for Christmas. Mothers to have the child from 5 p.m. the day school releases until Christmas Eve at 8 p.m. Um, and then fathers to have the child from Christmas Eve at 8 p.m. until school resumes. Um, and then thereafter, the regular schedule recommences. I am going to enter an order that reflects this. Um, you can both get a copy at the clerk's office um, probably tomorrow um, would be the soonest it'll be available um, to you. Um, I think that takes care of all of those issues we talked about. Um, I do want mother to maintain some contact um, with child. Um, the guardian item is free um, to um, bring the matter back at any time um, if there's an emergency, but I'd like to maintain some contact with mother. Um, I think that that's healthy for the child. I'm not making, so are you currently paying child support? Yeah. Yep, I'm current. Okay. Um, so with that is I'm going to suspend your obligation um, for child support. Um, and that's going to be effective um, August 31st um, of this year. So whatever you're obligated to pay, you're still obligated to pay through essentially the close of this month. Um, and then the obligation is suspended. Um, I'm not making any uh, child support orders in this case, other than suspending your obligation because I don't have sufficient financial information to do so. Either of you are free to bring, um, bring that back um, for me to address child support at any time or talk to the division of child support. Go ahead, ma'am. What about my court date on next week? The court date next week. What is your court date for? The restraining order, the response to his restraining order. Okay. I'm not entering a restraining order um, on either of you at this point. Um, so there was a temporary restraining order entered to ensure sort of compliance between last week and this week. Um, I'm not, I'm denying all restraining orders as to both parties, but you both have to comply with the court's orders. Um, so if one of you starts court. not complying, sure. um, then a restraining order can be appropriate. But at this point, I'm denying all restraining orders as that either of you have requested at this time. It seems that the main issue was establishing a parenting plan and that there was a lot of fear uh, about the child being taken from one home to the other. Um, and now that you have a court order, that makes it clear what both of your obligations are and what your visitation or residential time is. All right. So you should be able to get a copy um, of those orders. Um, again, tomorrow is a good time to get those. Um, Ma'am, go ahead. So these people have not been in her life or anything for eight years and you're just I've saying- I've heard you. Okay. The child is assaulting you and having mental health problems. It seems that the child may need a trouble change at school at for this point. Doing sexual okay. 
So at this point, that's my order. You can each get a copy of it at the clerk's office. Um, you'll need to bring cash if you want them to print it. Um, um, and you can get a copy of that tomorrow is a good time to get a copy of that. All right. That's it for today. Okay. So I can put her in school. I don't got to worry about her coming and taking her from school or anything like that. Or correct. You can you can you can and should enroll her in school. Please go okay. to Kelso Public Schools and do that today or wherever you reside. Um, the All court right, is you. going to note um, for the record um, that um, Ms. Knowles was incredibly inappropriate. Um, that she swore and was not able to manage herself appropriately during this process. Um, so her behavior is certainly going to be noted. Um, for the court, and you can also let the guardian ad litem know to look at the clerk's minutes. Is the first note it like so? It's like tomorrow. Is she supposed to go see her at five, or like, it, or, or, or do I go get that paperwork, and then it'll be on that paperwork? It'll be on the paperwork. Um, the way you determine what weekend it is is by looking at a calendar. So I, I tell people, look at a calendar, like the kind that has the boxes on the bottom and like the puppies and the kitties up top. <laughs> when you look at that yeah. kind of a calendar, um, look at the Fridays. It's as determined by Fridays. Um, and then the, um, in this case, um, look for the um, first and third um, Fridays. This won't, this upcoming okay. weekend um, won't be a first or third Friday. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Right. Thank you. Best of luck, sir.